Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be talking about the risk that is occurring to all REITs. It's not about high interest rate, but it's another reason that is happening. And if you have been following the news closely, you will be able to see it. If you like my videos, please hit the like, subscribe, and comment on what other things or what do you feel about this situation as well. Thank you, and let's begin. So if you have been following news closely with regards to REITs, one of the big tenants that have recently collapsed is Cytera Technologies Inc. It was a new startup company that was created in 2019, however, collapsed due to high interest rate and the restricted money that was coming from venture capitalists. So because of this collapse, three data center REITs were being affected in Singapore. Stand, it's gone. The obvious one would be firstly, digital core REIT, which actually previously mentioned about the major tenants at 22.4% of their gross income. Next is the surprising two, which is MIT, which is Maple Tree Industrial Trust and Kepler DC REIT, with the respective of 3.2% and less than 2% of asset under management for Kepler DC REIT. So in this kind of high interest rate environment, what does this situation actually tell us? It's important for REITs to have a diversified tenant list. In the event if one of the tenants file for bankruptcy, the REITs will not be as badly affected as it is. In this case, if we compare the three REITs, digital core rate will obviously be the worst or the badly, most badly hit with essentially 22.4% of their income being wiped out instantly. Moreover, if you follow my previous MIT earnings call video, the management has mentioned about how hard it is to get tenants and having a downtime of 6 to 9 months will greatly lower income for REITs during this period. Therefore, for data centers, MIT would tend to ensure that the tenants are being kept hold of to prevent turnovers. So in a short estimation, for shareholders of digital core REIT, a drop in the 22.4% income will equate to definitely more than that because they will have to also pay for the expenses of the vacant data center which essentially might come out to be about a 24% drop in distributable income. So this brings to another point to take note when it comes to analyzing REITs, and that is the performance of each individual tenants or each individual major tenants. When it comes to tenants rating and performances, there were actually telltale signs that danger was coming. If we look into the digital core REITs top 10 customers, Cytera Technologies stands out at number 2, which had a credit rating of triple C or CCAA2. So to give you a perspective of how bad this rating actually means is if we look at this table, triple C would essentially mean that this tenant was at a substantial risk of defaulting. Whereas if good companies such as Apple, Tesla or Microsoft, they would be in the top ratings, in the prime, high grade, or in the upper medium grade, which is investable grades. And if we look at the share price of Cytera Technologies, they have constantly been collapsing in the share price together with the company. With the rapid rise in interest rate, money became more restricted. Therefore, they are unable to raise from different avenues, thus leading to their collapse. So this is one of the reasons why Digital Core REITs share price and Capital DC REITs share price have a performance difference because markets sometimes would be able to see all this risk therefore pricing in into Digital Core REIT. For us, it's always important to make sure that we know the reasons why there are certain REITs with a much higher dividend yield which, it, which means that market actually price them at a much riskier investment. For Maple Tree Industrial Trust, it honestly came as a surprise as they did not disclose on their third major tenant. Sometimes REITs do not disclose on their tenants due to some agreements. Therefore, it's important that when you're analyzing REITs, you have to account for the amount of gross income that each major tenant actually contributes. This actually emphasizes again that having a diversified tenant is very important as Maple Tree Industrial Trust and Kepler DC REIT are not that much affected whereas compared to Digital Core REIT which would be expected to have a very huge drop in DPU. So if we do some rough estimation, we can actually estimate how much the subsequent dividend will be. 
for Maple Tree Industrial Trust, if the distributable income dropped by 3%, the distributable income will be estimated to be about 84 million. And that will equate to about a next quarter dividend of 3.23 cents or $32 per lot. And that will be annualized yield, dividend yield of 5.7%. Next, for digital call rate, it will definitely have a much larger impact. When we assume that the distributable income dropped by 24%, it will come in at USD of 8.2 million. And if we use the first half dividend, it will be around 1.42 cents. And that will annualize to about 8.2% at the current share price. So more bad news for REITs as well. And one of the ones that I always talk about is Manulife US REIT. But because of this, it's also a risk to other US office tenants as well. Similar to Digital Core Read, one of their major tenants has ended their lease prematurely. This tenant contributes about 3.3% of the overall gross income for Manulife. For Manulife, which has such a high leverage ratio, this is a very serious because it does not only affect their income. For those who are new to Manulife US Read, they are one of the reads that has a very high leverage ratio. In order not to hit the REITs limit of 50%, they have been raising funds through selling properties. And this was undesirable as they were forced to sell. With the current re leverage ratio of 49.5% and interest coverage of 2.9 times, losing one of the major tenants could not come at the worst time. With a loss of a long-term major tenants, property valuations will definitely further decrease. And with the same amount of debts, it will naturally increase their gearing ratio. Because leverage ratio takes into account the differences between the assets and the debts. With a drop in the assets, this meant that the amount of debts they can take is lesser. This would definitely cause Manulife to hit the 50% limit again and are forced to come up with ways to get more funds. On top of this news, occupancy of their properties are still continuing to drop. And in my opinion, more bad news will come where the REITs will be forced to sell the more properties in order to work out their leverage limit. This can be seen from their share price, which has dropped to a lows of 17 cents. Therefore, when it comes to investing, it's always important to know what you are investing in and why the REITs are priced at such a different level. Do not just go blindly invest in the different REITs just because the dividend yield is very high. There's a reason why markets are pricing these REITs at this kind of level. Of course, all these are just my predictions and opinions. Please do your due diligence when it comes to investing your hard-earned money. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. And please hit the like, subscribe and comment on what are your thoughts with regards to the recent events that are affecting the REITs market. You can also watch some of the, my other analysis of the REITs themselves. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.